Valley Vintage. We are starting sort of a series tonight. We actually are working on a project with another business in our little town for our local community center. We're redoing their clothes closet, which is a um, clothing donation site that has several rooms. And it's got this incredible mission and incredible volunteers, but the room, not so much. So we are redoing them for them. We're doing all kinds of painting and decorative painting and floors and all kinds of stuff. And they needed a new dresser. So we found this dresser in our inventory and we are- In our inventory, way, way up in the woods. Yes. In, in the freezing cold weather on the longest, ruddiest dirt road I've been on. But it was worth time. it. Oh, absolutely. It's so, just half the fun is getting it, you know? So, so we're gonna start tonight. Kevin is gonna do this because he does all our prep. And he's gonna talk about how do you pick a piece? How do you evaluate it? Is this, you know, worth fixing up? Do I really wanna paint this? Is it gonna be more trouble than it's worth? Um, and he's gonna prep it for us and show us what we do to prep because prep, I know a lot of people hate doing it. We get asked that question constantly. Um, there's no such thing as prep-free paint. It has nothing to do with the paint you're using. It has everything to do with the piece you're painting. So um, you always have to do a little minimal <coughs> prep, but you have to do some prep. Your finished product is only gonna be as good as the foundation you start on. So we're gonna switch places. So I have gloves on, it's winter. My hands through all of this stuff, like crack and everything. So what I'm going to show you how to clean, um, and I usually use the glove because my hands are already a mess anyway. So this particular piece, um, as you can see, it's, it's really kind of cool. It's got some nice, long, unique handles. You know, this is if you go to a garage sale, you drive by and you're skimming at 30 miles an hour, what you see, what is, you know, do you want something? So what, what you want to look for and again, this is, this is what we look for, so we'll kind of impart that to you guys. Um, what we look for are, are solid wood pieces. Um, every now and then we see something that has a, um, we'll call it a formica top, or a, one of those linoleum tops that has great bones. But for the most part, we really try to get solid wood pieces. And, and what, is that, what does that really mean? Well, <clears throat> so this is an old drawer from one of those ancient Singer sewing machine tables. You know, they used to have six or, you know, five or six drawers. So when you look at this, and tell me if I'm, you got it on here? Yeah. You can see it's beautiful wood grain, but look at this line on it. Well, what this is, this is a very thin, you can see the curved surface. This is a thin veneer that's glued to the top. And so this is the, this is the parting edge where they glue the two pieces together. Really cool but stuff. But you would not think that's a veneer. No, you, you it's It looks like so, solid oak. so well. Good giveaways are when you see with rounded corners, you know, and the grain follows, it's usually not real. So how you tell, and, and you tell me if you can see this, you look at the back. So get behind a dresser, get behind a bureau, get behind a hutch, and look at the back of the wood. I'll spin this around. But on the back of this, you can see there's, there's, a, there's a dark line. Well, that very, very thin dark line is this veneer that's glued on the top. Now they did this back in the 30s. They did a beautiful job. And it doesn't mean it's a bad piece. Oh, veneer, there are some great it's veneers. Gorgeous. But the important thing about understanding if you have veneer, old veneer is put together with water-based glue. So what I'm gonna show you about typically simple cleaning of furniture, um, you wanna just be knowledgeable about this so you don't dissolve the glue. You just wanna be careful in the cleaning and prepping. So I just wanted to show you that. So spin the piece around, look at the back of it, and if you see that fine little dark line edge, you're probably seeing something. So and like Kevin said, anything curved, like a waterfall dresser, yeah, yep. um, anything that has a lot of different designs in the wood going in a lot of different directions is usually a veneer Definitely. or a laminate. This is a newer little, little piece. Um, but I want to show it to you. So you look at the back of this, there's no wood grain on it. This is, this is not particle board. It's kind of a, um, it's almost like a, a, a sawdust board where they compress dust together. They press it and then they, they paint it and make it look like, make it look like wood. 
and then they may glue a very, very thin veneer on the top of it. And what is the backing of that? The backing of this is like a press board. Yeah, you yeah. do not want to get that wet. So this obviously was painted before. Yep, this was painted. So you look at the back of this, but this has a one piece solid wood back. It even has the maker's name on it. So this is a nice, this is a really nice solid, solid piece. So would you want to avoid buying a piece of particle board furniture to paint? Uh, it's not my favorite, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but you, uh, may you may find something that is, it has part of the board, uh, has great lines, it's got good detail, it's in good shape, and you like it. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. So when I show you how to clean it, particle board, press board, veneer with water bit with glues on top, those you want to be careful how you clean them. So that's what we'll we'll talk about now. The other thing when you're looking at a piece of furniture is how much repair do you have to actually do to it? So when you look at something like this one, so this, this drawer has no dovetails on it. So this is this is a nailed, um, so there are no 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 cut ends on the drawer. So these drawers are simply matched. And nailed together. It's not bad, but that that would tell you it's got a nice solid one piece bottom, great stuff, but it's not that old. This what do you think that's like 60s? Could be 60s. Yeah. Could be 60s. Whereas if you look at these I love, so these are yeah, this is cool. Round dovetails, all hand cut, very, very, very old. This could go this could go back to early 1900s, sometimes, sometimes a little before that. But this was machined, um, hand, hand cut and machined, but they're drilled and, and matched together. Just beautiful, beautiful work. A lot of the drawers, this is poplar. So if you see greenish wood, that's usually poplar. So in this piece, the other thing you want to look at, pull the drawers in and see if they like wobble up and down. If they, if they wobble up and down, sometimes you may find these drawer guides are either missing or the nail on the back may have come undone and it's dropped down a little bit. That's not a problem. You just want to right. Just, if you know. you're not if you're not somebody that is up to that kind of repair, know it know it ahead of time and don't buy it. So this is a nice open piece. Um, these dressers are great to repurpose. You can keep the top the bottom two drawers in. Leave the pull the bottom two drawers out. Pull it out. Put a shelf in the bottom so you can repurpose a dresser like this. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to mix up what I use to clean virtually everything. It's, it's probably the, the best all-around cleaner, um, TSP, which is trisodium phosphate, but it's phosphate-free. It comes in a liquid and it comes in a powder. I'm, I'm, I, like the, I like the powder. It kind of looks like Epsom salts or, or something like that. Um, and usually I just mix it in with a bucket. You can see the bucket. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's a typical bucket. Um, By the way, we do sell this here. A lot of um, retailers sell some type of prep you know, material. You can get it at every... Crud cutter, whatever. You can get it, you can at, get every, it at any every hardware every store. Every major hardware store, every major um, big box um, hardware and paint store. Just ask for TSP. Again, it's trisodium phosphate. It has no phosphate in it. And I clean furniture two, two ways. So the first one is so washing a car or washing the kitchen table. So if you think of how you wash your car, a bucket, a hose, sponge, it's like water splashing all over the place. You're literally spraying the furniture. And for the first time that anybody does it, it is a bit nerve wracking because you just can't believe you're hosing but down a dresser. be clear, you're only doing this with 100% solid yep. wood. So you're, that's why you want to look at your furniture first, check to make sure you have no particle board, no fiber board, no, um, no laminate, no veneer, all of those things because those you do not want to wash like a car. The other thing too, if you have a piece with an old silver back mirror, you want to be very careful not to like hose down the silver back mirror because you, you don't want to ruin the mirror. So you may either want to, if you can't take it off, you can tape it up or be judicious with the hose. I do it all the time. Uh, the other way is <clears throat> washing like a kitchen table. So you think of that, if you're still mixing up the TSP in the bucket, you still have, you've got your sponge, you know, you're kind of wringing it out and you're really 
just kind of you're putting it on, but you're washing. Like you'd wash your kitchen you're table after dinner. Down the kitchen table, so the the two work. So here, because I'm inside, I'm not going to wash anything. Sometimes by the time I'm finished, it looks like I washed a car. Um, but I'll typically wash everything inside the way I'm washing a, a cleaning a kitchen table. You can do a number of different things. I've got painting canvases. This is a nice, like enamel painted concrete floor, so I'm okay with it. I want to make sure it doesn't get slippery. TSP is a great, great surfactant, meaning it's a very, very hardworking cleaner. So if you get if you get it on anything that's dirty, it's going to clean it. When you're finished with your towels at the end, you'll take all these and throw them in your washing machine. And anything that's in your washing machine with these towels is gonna to get clean because yep. this stuff really cleans in, in, incredibly well. So a couple of things TSP will not remove, and you can kind of see when you do that. Um, one would be hard paste wax. So, so hard, <clears throat> hard paste wax. If somebody dripped a candle on it and it's yep. got candle wax. So if you're, if you're wiping over the top of it. So if you're cleaning a piece that, let's say somebody painted with like a chalk base paint, Oh, that's a great one. And yeah. they sealed it with sealed wax. It. Yep. You need to use um, either like a citrus solvent or mineral spirits just to get that wax off. So if I were to go on top of here and I see it beating up like a car that just came out of the, the car wash, like nice big droplets of water, which it's not doing, um, then I would know I've got a problem and the TSP is not going to be good enough. I can clean the whole piece and then go back with, with a mineral spirit and take off whatever, whatever I'm finding on the surface. But all you have to do really, um, depending on how dirty it is, you know, is really kind of wipe it on. You don't have to scrub it. You don't have to do anything. Um, then what I have, clean, clean water, you bring it out, and you want to you wipe off. Um, so you want to get the residue off. You want to get the residue off so it doesn't dry. Um, some TSP, they're all different. Some say you don't have to rinse. I just kind of like to rinse anyway, just it makes me feel, you know, like I'm not forgetting a step. If you don't, if, if there's wax on there and it's not removed, um, your paint is just not going to adhere properly. Adhere. It might be all right for a while, but it, it, you're not going to have, um, a good result. And, you know, a lot of people tell me they actually sand wax off, that hasn't worked well for us. No, so what's going to happen if you if you have real wax on the side, um, and we had a piece like this, if you have wax on the side and you try to sand it, there's a lot of friction in sanding, you may, you may sand off some of the wax, but the wax is gonna get caught in the sandpaper, and then through the friction of going back and forth, you're actually gonna melt the wax. You won't see it, it's not gonna get that wet, you'll soften it and it's gonna bury itself into the grooves that the sandpaper's making. So the wax is just gonna stay there, burrowed further into the wood, and it's not gonna go. You really need to dissolve the wax and pull it off of it. Now, one of the things you wanna also do when you're, when you're cleaning, which I haven't done here, you really wanna clean inside. You really wanna clean inside, inside the, the drawers. drawers. You really want to clean in the bottom of the drawers. Why? This is going to be your one chance to get the cobwebs, the spider webs, the mildewy smell. We, we had a customer who cleaned. We cleaned. had somebody that took our class, yep. our 101 class. Um, she painted a dresser. She, she came in. She's like, it came out so fantastic. However, it smells. And I said, did you clean it with TSP? Yes. Did you clean the drawers? No. So, you know, if you don't clean the inside and outside of your piece and there's an odor, you're still gonna have that. Do not put wet drawers back in a piece. Let everything dry first. If you put wet wood back together again, and it swells just a little, you'll never get it out. Um, but it's also, you may just for, have, have to force it to get in because the drawer may swell, and you don't want to break the furniture for no reason. So clean the piece, put it in the driveway. The sun will dry this out, and by the time I'm finished with the other drawers, 
If I put this out, this won't be dry. I'll flip it around, let the sun hit the back of it. It'll, it'll be good to go and ready, ready. And then it's ready to paint, essentially. So what are you doing now? So this is, I wanted to show, so here's an old chair. I, I was trying to dig through our stuff to find out where's a chair or something that's, something that's kind of dirty that, that I haven't really cleaned yet. Um, so this is really dark. It's got, um, it has some polyurethane. It's a very on. shiny yeah, finish. Shiny, shiny, so I want to look at that. I can see where there are run marks. So somebody sprayed it or dripped or, dripped or ran stuff on it. So now all, automatically you can just see this still isn't bad at all. Even the, I could see the, the floor under you was already dirty. Yeah. That's kind of why I'm doing this. Yeah. So I want to give you a little more of a visual so that, uh, because this, this is not showing a lot of dirt. It doesn't mean that there isn't dirt on it. But right. And this is a solid piece. This is a solid piece. This would be in the driveway being washed off with the hose and everything. So this, this chair that he is cleaning right now was pretty shiny. It had a, like a polyurethane or a varnish on it. So um, in, in most cases, after you clean it really well and it dries, it's gonna be nice and dull. When it's nice and dull, it's ready for paint. So honey, what do we do if it's still shiny when it dries? So if it's still shiny, um, you wanna look at it and see you know, how, how shiny it is. And what I would do, um, typically, is I'll take 220, 220 grit. I wouldn't go um, heavier than that. So sandpaper, the larger the number, the smaller the, finer the, the grit. grit. The finer the grit. So 400 grit is very, very, very fine. Hard to sand and really get through much on wood with 400. 360 is about as fine as you could go. 220 is good. It really... When I feel it, you know, it, it doesn't make a lot of scratch. And once you get into 100, you'll start to put some scratches in wood, and you'll actually take some wood off. So you can use, you can use 100, too. You just want to be careful. Oh, if people ever strip furniture anymore. They do. Um, I have some, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get, thank you for that question. Um, I have a stripper that I will use, um, and it works pretty well. You can use it, you can use it indoors, but... Um, I've got a little trick that I'll, I'll, I'll show you how, what I do with it. Um, so in what, in what circumstance would you strip something? So, let's say, let's say this piece right here. Let's say you, you love this piece, you like the wood inside of it, and, you can, and, the, and the paint on the top is in bad shape, and it's maybe chipped, and, and you either want to restain it, or you want to repaint it, but you don't like you know, you don't like the surface on it and it's, it's, it's messed up. So what you could do is you would you could strip the paint off of just the top of this. Um, pretty easy to do. If you just want to do the top, then you maybe take some masking tape, run it along the edges of where you don't want the, the paint stripper to get to. Um, let, me, let me go grab Why it. not just sand it? Well, so problem with sanding, you, you can. Problem with sanding, number one, it's noisy. So you want to watch your ears. Number two, generates all kinds of dust. Um, even the dust collecting sanders still generate all kinds of dust. I don't know when this was painted. I don't know what's underneath of it. And if there's white paint that's got titanium dioxide in it, it could have lead in it. So you want to be really careful about old antique furniture that had lead-based paint in it. That's like a big thing. So you're, once you once you sand that. The whole room gets filled with dust and you're, you're, you know, even if you're sanding it outside, unless you wear a respirator, but, and you can't do that. So let me get the other stuff real quick. So this, I've been using this, um, had to practice with it for a while. Um, so the old paint stripper um, was, usually came in a metal can, um, Zip Strip and a couple of other companies. They still make it. Um, it, it's, it's, it comes in like a, a pasty gel. I would highly recommend you don't you don't use it. Um, 
as a you know as a career I'm a geologist environmental consultant this stuff is horrific um, it's it contains methylene chloride which is probably one of the one of the single worst chemicals that you can actually come in contact with um, if you if you get it a pin drop of it on your skin you'll feel it burn right away that's like yeah how bad it is. but but so. but going back to stripping do we even strip one piece a year I did that chest you know yeah, yeah so yeah. probably like one piece a year one piece a year that's and and it's really the piece that has six coats of disgustingly thick latex paint on it so this is citrus strip I'm not advertising the brand but I've used it I've used it when I use it and it works really well it, it's a gel it doesn't have harsh fumes you can use it inside um, I'd still say if you you know you want to leave a window open but if you're sensitive to it this is probably the best stuff you could use what I would end up doing would be just opening the top up on this and just like gooping it out on the top taking a paintbrush rubber foam um, and, and just painting it out in a wet thick layer you, you read the directions on it but in a wet thick layer on the top a good really super super heavy wet layer so that you don't do it again now that the, the trick that I learned that works really well get some saran wrap and take the saran wrap and lay it out over the top of it and just let it let it kind of adhere to the gel and cover the top so this top it would take two sheets of saran wrap from one end to the next just flatten it out press it with your hand and leave it overnight just leave it overnight um, it, the cool thing is with the saran wrap this will stay wet and it will keep working all night long and you come back in the morning or the next night just lift the saran wrap off throw it in the garbage take a spatula and more than likely you'll just scoop the layer of paint right off the top yeah it works really it works really well yeah. so, so that saves you from sanding so that's the opposite of sanding so, so on this piece right here um, what I'll do is been sitting for a minute So this is an old antique office chair that is pretty, it, it was like pretty dirty. Tent, it tent. actually, one thing you may notice when you're cleaning with whatever cleaner you're using, if, if you have a really dirty old piece, it might smell. That's not the cleaner, that's the dirt coming out, that's the odor coming out of your furniture. So another thing you might see when you take an old natural wood, um, very dark piece, that you may see all those old crazy cracks in it, but it's not paint. Um, that's shellac. So shellac is the early version of polyurethane. Um, it's kind of protein um, shells. They used to use um, insect shells. And, and so when you, when you wash it with TSP, you may actually see the gelatin come off that's okay you're not ruining you're not ruining it actually you're doing yourself a favor because if you wash the shellac and the shellac dissolves if you would have painted over top of it it probably wouldn't have adhered very mm -hmm. long it, it may have held but but it's ready to come off anyway I'm gonna, I'm gonna dry it okay. with a dry towel just to see. I have a okay. funny feeling. I have a funny feeling the varnish is still there. Still there. So every once in a while, you will get a piece that has a varnish on it. You see a lot of maple, um, like from the '70s, that mm -hmm. has a very shiny finish on it, and sometimes even after you've cleaned it. The shine is still there. Um, so I'll tip this up so you can still see. So yep, there it so is. Somebody, somebody painted this with a heavy, heavy, heavy-handed like polyurethane. Or Very shellac, badly or too. Or shellac or something. They really like globbed it on. I'm not quite sure what they were doing with it, but that's okay. Um, so that is what I would use the 220 on. All you're really looking for, you're not trying to take this off. But what you want to do is you want to put small grooves in it 
so that the paint has the same chance to adhere to it that it has on raw wood. So you want to create some grip. It has a gloss wow. look to it, but I've, I've knocked down the shine everywhere on this. So, so this would be ready to paint if you wanted to paint this. Look how know? easy that was. I mean, yeah. So it's not, not that bad. was no big deal. And this chair, is, you can see the dirt on the floor. Not that bad. You know, and basically you just mop it up. What if there are dents in the wood? If you want to smooth it, mm -hmm. um, they've got some very, very good um, wood putty. So what, what you should probably get don't get the wood putty that always stays soft. There's an oil-based wood putty that never hardens. Don't use that. Um, but they, Minwax makes great wood putties. Um, so you can take it with a spatula, smear it, smear it into the, into the hole. You'll probably have to do two, or it's kind of like spackling, two coats. So your first coat's not gonna be perfect. Just put it on, let it dry, but don't let it dry like a rock. Let it really start to dry so it's 60% dry. So you might still be able to put your finger and dent into the wood putty. Um, then get one of these foam sanding pads. Um, and then when it's, we'll say 60% dry, so you can still, still put your finger in it and make a dent in it, but it's not super soft. Then you just scuff the top and, and that wood, that excess wood putty will come, that's all around, will come off really easy. If you let wood putty sit and dry like a rock, get ready for like 10 or 15 minutes of sanding because the stuff really gets hard. So you'll knock it off really quickly. It's nice and light. Look at it, see if you got another little dent. Put another little coat on. The second coat will be quick, 10 minutes, scuff it off again, you're ready to paint. And so you fix all your dents. So you can literally, if you've got a dresser top that's got 20 dents, you can probably fix it in an hour with, with no trouble at all. Um, you'll, you'll find that, so if you wanted to use a stain, if you clean bare oak, it will do what they call raise the grain. So the grain of the oak will come up and the, and the wood might feel a little rougher, believe it or not, after you wash it. Again, once the wood's dry, take a piece of 220 sandpaper, scuff over the top, it'll be smooth as a pool table and ready, ready for paint, stain, mm -hmm. or anything, you know. So next week, we're going to continue on this piece. We are going to um, start painting it next week. Yep. So I am not going to put any paint on this piece before we see you guys again next Wednesday. I want to show you how to pick your brush, how to get started. Where? What do you paint first? Do you paint it with the, with the drawers in or out? Do I need do all, I, yeah, all, yeah, all that stuff? We're going to go through all this stuff. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next Wednesday when we start working, getting paint on this piece next mm -hmm. week.